you notice we've got these cool masks on. This is to help everybody stay healthy. Do you get to wear masks when you go out? Yeah. Well, we've got some fun experiments and activities to do. I hope you're ready. First thing we wanna do is I wanna to talk to you a minute about the stars. Do you like to go outside at night and see how many stars you can see? I sure do. In fact, when I was growing up, I used to have a telescope and I could see the moon with it. Well, we've got an activity that you can make stars in a jar so that you can see stars at night when you go to sleep. But first, I thought I'd show you this really cool video I found. It's got some puppets in it, and they're gonna tell you all about stars and a thing called constellations. Can you say that word? It's pretty big, constellations. Well, constellations are the pattern that you see of stars up in the sky, almost the when they look like the dot the dots. And some of those constellations even have names. So let's look at this really fun video. It's only a couple minutes long. What are stars anyways? Are they made of fire? Well, sort of. They're giant burning balls of gas. Whoa, but they look so tiny. That's because they're very, very far away. Now let's look for constellations. Consta what what? Constellations. That's when you see a patch of stars that look like a picture. Like, uh, oh, there, uh, there's the Big Dipper. <gasps> Whoa. If you'd like to see the entire video, go to Topher's Toy Box Stars and Constellations on YouTube. Now let's do a craft where you can have a jar full of stars right in your room. This is an activity that you might want to watch me do first and then try it yourself at the end so that you have more time to put into it. For this activity, you're going to need an old clear jar, like a mason jar or an old spaghetti sauce or pickle jar that's been cleaned off and the label taken off the outside. You will also need a paper that fits around the inside of it and have some stars drawn on it. I copied mine off the internet and just traced the pictures of the constellations. The constellations are just the way the stars are in the sky at night, kind of like dot, dot, dot. You'll also need either the center part of a tin aluminum tray that you've cut out into a rectangle that also fits inside your jar, or we used a piece of aluminum, aluminum sheeting that we um, cut down to the right size. You'll also need like a nail or one of those screws that have a sharp point on the end and a hammer to hit it with. I also recommend having a board or something underneath it so that you don't mess up your table at home. And then if you have a flameless tea candle that you can turn on that's battery operated, you can put that on the inside. And then at night you'll be able to see all the light shining through your holes that make stars. Hi everybody! You ready to make a really cool night light that makes stars in your room? Well, first, you need to trace some of the star constellations onto some paper. And you wanna make the paper be the same size that's gonna fit into your jar. Here's the jar I'm gonna use. It was an old pickle container and all I did was get a piece of paper and I measured how tall it was. So see this will fit inside there. And I rolled it up just to make sure that it'll go inside. Then I cut a piece of aluminum sheeting to fit my metal piece. And since my paper was a little short, I made mine a little longer. 
so that it'll go all the way around inside. Well, here's my sheeting. Um, what I used was aluminum sheeting, but if you have an old um, aluminum pan that's a disposable one and you just cut the rectangle out of the middle, that'll work just fine. Now, I have a little piece here that was a scrap that I'm gonna use just as practice. So what you're gonna do is take your nail and put it over your where you want it and you're going to hammer it a little bit. Now if you look, this one didn't come through as much. So I do have this one here, or maybe I have to hit it a couple times or like that to make it so there's a hole through it. Um, and notice I have a piece of wood underneath it here so that I don't ruin our table or break my nail on the cement or crack the cement. And what you're going to do, you can try a couple different ones to see which works better for you. Like I like using the screws because they're a lot sharper on the end and see how it goes all the way through. Then what you're going to want to do is take your aluminum and put your picture your paper over it with your stars it would also be a really good idea to tape down the sides and that way you don't have to worry about your paper moving when you go to um, hit the nail now what you want to do is hammer anywhere that you have a dot that's supposed to be a star Now I did what was called the summer triangle and it's a bunch of the stars that you'll see during the summertime. But you can pick any of your favorites like maybe the Big Dipper or Orion's Belt. You'll have to research that and see what you like. Now once you get all of the stars in your constellation, you can add smaller little stars throughout, kind of filling in some space because there's lots of stars all over the sky and that'll also let more light go through. Now when you're all finished, take your paper off and look to see all the stars that you have on your piece of metal. This is what's going to go inside your jar. And you can even add some more stars if you want. You can never have too many. And now look, we're finished. And look, you can even see the light from the sun showing through down on the board. That's what's gonna, what it's gonna look like in our jar. Now we need to roll it a little bit so that we can get it curled up enough to fit inside the jar and then it'll uncurl a little bit once it's inside. Drop in your lit candle and put the lid on your jar. And now you're all set to watch the stars when you're in your room tonight. Are you ready to blast off to another experiment? It's a wax resist. We are going to create a picture of the night sky. Did you know that water and oil or wax don't mix? Did you know that crayons are made of wax like a candle? Well, we can see this wax resist in our drawings. That means that the water doesn't want to mix with the wax crayon on the paper. So first you need to make a nighttime star picture or a space picture on a thicker kind of paper. I'm using watercolor paper, but cardstock or craft paper will work too. I like to use white crayon on white paper, so when I put the watercolors over it, I get a big surprise but you can go ahead and use whatever colors you want. Once I finish drawing, I mix up my watercolors and paint all over the page, just straight across. Look how the wax crayon resists the watercolor paint. It makes little drops on the crayon. And look how my drawing appears like magic. 
That's why I like drawing with white crayon on white paper when I do this. For another fun space activity, let's make Mundo! Mundo uses one cup of baking soda, silver glitter, and black glitter, and water, which I have here. And you're just going to add it a little bit at a time, and you need a big spoon to stir it. So let's put in the one cup of baking soda. There you go, Haley can check and make sure. Now dump it in. Now we're going to get some of our water. But first, I'm going to add a little bit of watercolor to the, uh, to the water. And um, if you have black, that's great. I don't have any, so I'm just going to add some blue. And if the kids are going to be playing in a lot and it's really thick, you might want to put gloves on their hands. So we're going to pour this in. Stir it up. And actually, I think maybe we'll add some of the glitter to our baking soda first before we put the water in. So we're going to put the glitter, start with the silver, or whichever one, doesn't matter. You don't need a lot. It's totally up to you. You can pour it in. Maybe I'll put a little bit more in there. Okay, Haley's sprinkling in some of the black glitter. I think if we open the top, we'll get a little bit more out, so it won't take so long. We'll dump some of that in. So now we're going to have sparkly, moon-colored rocks. Okay, Haley's going to help stir that up. And then we'll go about adding the water once she gets this all stirred together. Okay, now be careful adding the water. We don't want to have too much in at one time. If it does get soupy, then you can always add more baking soda. So we'll go with one spoon. Let's see what it looks like. Add a little bit more. And just get your fingers right in there. The kids are worried about it touching their hands. They can go ahead and use the, the spoon, but it's just best just to get in there. This is a great sensory project. Okay, let's get some more water in there. Get that mixed in. Yeah, a little, a little bit more, just a little. See if it starts sticking together. If it starts clumping together, then you're good. If it's breaking apart a lot, then add more water and it might also depend on how dry your hands are because the hands are going to soak up some of that moisture so if your hands are really dry you might need to add a little bit more or even as you're playing with it okay this is looking pretty good so really this is just a baking soda dough Yeah, now it's working. Look at how that's holding together. Now I have my own moon rock. Isn't that cool? Now you can keep this dough in a sealed container for about a week or more so you can keep playing with it. When you are finished with your dough, then you can have fun making fizzy moon rocks. All you have to do is add vinegar to the dough. It's best to use a dropper and just put a little bit on at a time so you can watch it and have fun playing. Or if you really want to get crazy, pour it on. Look at that fizz. It looks like a bubbling cauldron. Now we're going to do our last experiment. We're going to launch a rocket. Are you ready to blast off? 
First, you need to make a launch pad. We use Tinker Toys. We have eight of the round flat ones, four of the taller stick-like pieces, and four smaller pieces. And then you want to check that your bottle is going to fit in that and not fall through. We have a two liter bottle here. Pour one to two cups of vinegar into a clean two liter bottle. That's your rocket. Then make a baking soda bomb. That's putting baking soda into a small piece of a paper towel and make sure it's skinny enough that you can fit it into the top of the bottle. You kind of wrap it up in the paper towel. And you can add more vinegar if you think that you need more. Once you get it in, you put your baking soda bomb into the top of the rocket. And this might take a little bit of work to get it all in. It's kind of hard to make it skinny enough. Get that pushed in there. Once you get it in, you're going to put a cork in it and take a little shake. But as you can see, ours kind of exploded a little bit too soon. So we tried it all again. Still too fast, so maybe don't give it a shake. How about you try it? If you get yours to launch, video it, send it to us, and we'll post it. We'd love to see it. Be sure you do this outside as the rocket can go pretty high, and as you can see, it's very messy. Thanks for joining us for Chippy Sensational Science Lab. See you later. For more great videos, go to bcmuseum.org.